been 1,029 days since KD and Kyrie signed in Brooklyn. They've won one playoff series, and this is what this season looked like. And KD was not exaggerating, Smitty, when he said that they had been dealt quite the hand this season. I mean, yeah, they had. They had some adversity. A lot of things going on. But I think um, when you start saying the Brooklyn Nets got swept in the first round, that's just unacceptable. Because once they got all these bad hands dealt to them, they had guys together where they should not have got swept in the first round. They're too talented and too good to get swept in the first round. So, yes, they got to go to the back to the drawing board. And it's a long drawing board because they, like, they have a lot of holes to fill. Um, right now, the personnel just doesn't fit around KD and Kyrie. And, yes, we're waiting for Ben Simmons. Until Ben Simmons plays, though, they still have to find some ways to better this team with more two-way guys versus just guys that are specialists and very, very small. It's also probably difficult, Zeke, to make those kind of decisions when there wasn't enough continuity this season to see what worked and what didn't. Yes and no. <clears throat> and this is where, you know, um, you know, experience comes in. And, and I would have to disagree with who's been dealt the worst hand over the last couple of years. I would say the Toronto Raptors have been dealt a really bad hand for a whole year not being able to play in Toronto and having to move to Tampa and, and then all the changes that they've gone through, right? And then I look at the Miami Heat, and you and I talked about this the other night. Nine undrafted players mm -hmm. on their roster. Let me say this again. <laughs> Nine undrafted players on their roster, and they finished number one in the East. So when you talk about adversity and, and, and people having – teams and organizations having difficult challenges. Okay, there have been a, several of them who've had difficult challenges. Now, the difference is those teams and those organizations had experienced leaders at the top and on the bench and was able to navigate. What we saw here in Brooklyn is that lack of experience in terms of dealing with that adversity that was hitting, mm -hmm. you know, they didn't handle it as well as the Miami Heat handled it and the Toronto Raptors handled it. We measure success in the NBA relative to expectation. If you have Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving on your team, you are expected to contend for championships. Yes. As we look at all of the free agents that they have on their roster currently, what is it this team needs to contend next season? Well, I, I think for them is um, how are they going to play and approach their culture? has nothing to do with me on the court. Yes, there's some things you can change, but the culture of the Brooklyn Nets are going to have to change. I mean, it's, it's got to be a change on we're going to come out here and they're going to have to get some more competitive guys, guys that want to compete at every instance. They didn't have enough of those guys, in my opinion. I thought the guy who came out and competed, one of the hardest tonight was Goran Dragic. Mm -hmm. Hadn't been there. But he came in, it has nothing to do with style and which way you play. you got to at least come out there and compete harder than the guys they had right now playing. And also, I mean, they went small, but they didn't have to play small ball. They have LaMarcus Aldridge and Blake Griffin on their team with Nick Claxton, Andre Drummond, and Kevin Durant. You don't have to go that small to play against the Boston Celtics. Yes, they're a huge team, but I thought they were supposed to play bigger. I, I agree. And, and when you look at you know, the difference in styles. Like, Boston came in with an offensive and a defensive philosophy. They had an offensive scheme. They had a way of playing and a way of approaching the game in terms of how they win, how we win as the Boston Celtics. When I look at Brooklyn, they had an individual style of offensive, okay, we're going to isolate here, we're going to isolate there. They did not have a, a, a total flow of offensive mm -hmm. scheme. So when you look at, you know, although Brooklyn had better, you know, what we call offensive skilled players in terms of Durant and Harding, what Boston brought to the game was a philosophy. And, and it reminds me of, okay, we got Shaq sitting over in the other studio. When Shaq was in Orlando with Penny Hardaway and, and Nick Anderson, and, you know, they, they went to the NBA Finals. But Shaq didn't become a champion until he went to the Los Angeles Lakers 
and he got put in a philosophy, in the scheme, in the system where he and Kobe and Hori and all of them can collectively play together 